Hi, in this video, I will talk about Max Wittheimer. Max Wittheimer was born in Prague, where his father ran a successful business college. The Wittheimer family lived comfortably while simultaneously straddling two cultures, Jewish and German. Later, Max Wittheimer's Jewish ancestry will put him and his family at the risk of their lives and force them to immigrate to the United States. To escape Nazism, with Heimer's father bringing his other son Walter to succeed him as the director of the business college, Max, on the other hand, resisted his father's wishes and obtained a more traditional education. After attending a Catholic grammar school and a local gymnasium, he enrolled at the University of Prague to study law. In addition. He took a wide variety of other courses, and after two years, switched to the study of philosophy and psychology. From Prague, with Hammer moved to the University of Berlin, where he studied with Karl Stumpf. There, with Hammer worked in the phonogram archives that Stumpf had established. Those archives collected samples of music from around the world. From Berlin, Wittheimer moved to Würzburg to study with Oswald Kuhl, where he developed an interest in the psychology of light detection. Wittheimer received his PhD there in 1904. The topic was experimental investigations of diagnosis and the facts of a case. Wittheimer's last research area, apparent motion. Made him famous. The research on apparent motion, later called the Fine Phenomenon, was the datum that caused others to take notice of Gestalt psychology for the first time. No one knows exactly what Wittheimer observed in 1910 through the train window as he was traveling from Vienna to begin a vacation. One version states that. He noticed that the more distant telegraph poles, houses, and hilltops along the route seemed to be speeding along with the train. He realized the movement he was observing had to be somehow coming from his brain. To observe outside the train, all of those stimuli would appear stationary. Regardless of what the inspiration was, it caused him to stop at the last station. Frankfurt, and buy a common toy available at the time, a Zoetro. The rapidly spinning slits made the slightly different images on the inside of the toy appear to move. He quickly dropped his vacation plans and went to the University of Frankfurt. He made the laboratory space available along with a tachistoscope of his own design. That instrument allowed Wittheimer to present the stimuli and accurate timing conditions far beyond those of the toy zoetrope. Simply put, the five phenomenon is not the apparent movement of objects to and fro caused by displaying two similar virtual stimuli alternately in a darkened room. Instead. The five phenomenon that Wittheimer and his subject observed was the movement of a spot between the two stimuli that occurred when the stimuli were presented nearly simultaneously. Such spots were not real; they were created by the brain. Furthermore, observers saw both stimuli and the moving spot at all times. Gestalt psychology developed quickly. Following the discovery of the five phenomena during the World War One, Wittheimer and other psychologists were drafted into military service. In 1916, Wittheimer moved back to the University of Berlin as an instructor. At the University of Berlin, Wittheimer began to turn his interests away from perception and towards the psychology of thinking. As Wittheimer achieved worldwide prominence in the 1920s, the University of Frankfurt offered him a chairmanship there, along with the rank of full professor, 
and he accepted. But in the meantime, the Nazi storm clouds were growing. After Hitler was named the Chancellor of Germany in 1933, change came quickly. Soon the most, when the hammer realized that his days in Germany were numbered, he never listened to Hitler speak on the radio. But after doing so, with the hammer and his family left Germany the next day. Soon after, he accepted an offer to teach at the newly formed New School for Social Research in New York City, where he taught until his death. In conclusion, Max with the hammer did a lot of contribution on Gestaltism. To with the hammer, Gestaltism could encompass nearly any aspect of human, including perception and thinking. The key was not to break down natural processes artificially; instead, it was to look for an organic whole, a Gestalt, and examine it concretely, functionally, and experimentally. Thank you.